Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, before we went for our break, we were looking at chapter two. Uh, we'll begin looking at uh, chapter three now. It's talking about the Holy Spirit uh, who leads us and guides us and directs us uh, even as we build God's uh, kingdom. So as kingdom builders, it's very important for us uh, to lean on, to depend on, to submit and to hear uh, you know, uh, uh, and to know where the Holy Spirit is leading us and um, guiding us. So regardless of, you know, whichever occupation, vocation that we are in, we must be led by the Spirit of um, God. Again, it's important to know, uh, you know, as we were just saying in chapter 2, it's important to know what God's will is and to do what uh, God's will is and who reveals the will of God to us, who reveals the heart and mind of God to us. It's the Holy um, Spirit. Uh, if you look at Matthew chapter 21, verses 20, uh, sorry, Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 uh, to 23, um, you know, Jesus says, Not everyone who calls uh, him Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. And many will say to me in that day, Lord, uh, have you not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and have done uh, wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, uh, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who pro practice uh, lawlessness. So, you know, uh, what Jesus is saying, it's possible to do many good things in the name of uh, Jesus, you know, but you can do that, uh, you know, without having a personal relationship with him. So it's the important thing here is to have a personal relationship uh, with Jesus Christ, uh, you know, then doing many things that are important in his uh, name. And he says, you know, when you do uh, things in his name uh, without having a personal relationship with Christ, then he calls that lawlessness. Okay, so what is lawlessness? Lawlessness is basically, you know, uh, anything that's not the will of God, that is not born out of our relationship with him, that is not birthed out of our relationship with him. Anything that we do, which we think is, uh, you know, is God's will, but we're basically it's our will, it's our choice, uh, it's what is motivating us, it's what is uh, directing us. You know, so whatever is not the will of God and it's not born out or birthed out of a relationship with him. And if it's done in the name of uh, Jesus, then that is lawlessness. Uh, so we can do many things in Jesus name, uh, but it's not necessarily that what uh, it is his will for our life, what he wants us uh, to do. So a priority as kingdom builders is first is to have a relationship with him. Second, it is to know what his is will. And then, you know, to, to submit, to surrender in obedience, to do what is his will. And then, you know, we will find, the, uh, we will receive the anointing, we will receive the power, and we will flow in the power and the authority that God is giving to us to fulfill that mandate, that calling, uh, the will that he has purposed for our um, lives. So it's the Holy Spirit who reveals the will uh, of the Father uh, to us here on earth. And Jesus in John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15, uh, he talks about uh, some of the roles of the Holy Spirit or the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. So can one of you please read uh, John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15, please? John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take off mine and declare it to you. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. Amen. So here we see that the Holy Spirit guides us um, and the Holy Spirit, you know, reveals, takes from Jesus what Jesus receives from the Father. So the Father tells Jesus, Jesus tells the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit uh, reveals things to us. He tells us things not only about the present, 
uh, but also uh, what things are to come way into the future, uh, the Holy Spirit reveals to us. Why does he uh, reveal things uh, that are coming, going to come into the future or in the in the future seasons of our life um, so that, you know, we can uh, be mindful of what God is uh, doing in the future. Uh, we can receive his word. We can receive um, uh, his uh, plan and purpose. And we can prepare in advance uh, for what he has uh, positioning us or destined us uh, to do in the future. So it's basically uh, the Holy Spirit revealing it to us in the present, uh, things about our future so that we can plan and uh, we can um, prepare. Okay, and we, uh, how do we know that it's the Holy Spirit, you know, who's revealing this truth, revealing the heart of God for us, revealing the Father's will, uh, telling us uh, things about the future. It says, you know, he will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it uh, to you. So, you know, um, the Holy Spirit always does things to glorify um, Jesus. So if you know, whatever we receive, how do we know that it's from the Holy Spirit if it is, you know, going to bring glory and magnify uh, Jesus Christ, then we know that this is what we have heard from uh, the Holy Spirit. It's not our conscience, it's not our own voice, it's not our own intellect or our own understanding, our desires that is speaking um, up, okay? So uh, if, if the things that we hear are things that is for self-promotion, uh, for self-exaltation, then we know it's not the Holy Spirit uh, speaking. And we can be sure it's the Holy Spirit speaking when we know that this is what is going to bring glory to God and exalt uh, Him. And Romans chapter 8, verse 14 says that, you know, uh, the children of God or those who are sons and daughters of God are those who are led by the Spirit of God. God says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, which means that, you know, uh, you and I as children of God, as sons and daughters of God, uh, you and I have the privilege of, um, you know, of uh, being led by the Holy Spirit. You know, isn't that an awesome privilege that we have, you know, to be led by the Holy Spirit? So it's very important that, uh, you know, we know this truth. And the other important thing is that we are sensitive uh, to the Holy Spirit. How do we become sensitive to the Holy Spirit? Whereas when we are fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, we always constantly are fellowshipping with the Father, more with the Son, but not with the Holy Spirit. But it's important to speak to the Holy Spirit because He's the third person in the Trinity. You know, we need to commune with Him. We need to fellowship with Him. We need to tell Him, Holy Spirit, lead me, uh, anoint me, give me a fresh anointing uh, uh, today. You know, uh, show me what you want me to do you know, uh, what is your will in my life? Or you can just write, uh, you know, your, your uh, say, Holy Spirit, I want to write a plan for the next 10 years of my life. Reveal to me what is in God's heart, uh, the Father's heart. Reveal to me what the, uh, what Jesus is, uh, wants me to do. Reveal it to me, God, show me. And the Holy Spirit will re reveal things to you. He will lead you, guide you in small decisions that you have to take and even, even, even in the bigger ones that you make in um, uh, life. So, you know, uh, knowing God's will is not a mystery. It's not something that we have to, you know, twist the arm of God or have the hand of God to find out or stand upside down to find out. It uh, It's not like that. It's the Holy Spirit who reveals the heart and the mind uh, of God. And uh, we must, you know, uh, you know, uh, we must come to that place where we desire to know the heart of God, desire to know the mind of God, desire to know what is his will and plan and purpose. And accordingly, the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us uh, and help us uh, to do things uh, according to the Father's uh, will. Okay. But we also need to be very careful that, you know, uh, uh, you know, that we are not feeding our, uh, our spirit man, but we are feeding, uh, uh, sorry, we are not feeding our, our, our carnal nature, but we are feeding our spirit uh, man. Because if we have to hear from the Holy Spirit, then it's, he puts the thoughts and desires and deposits in our spirit man. Okay, that is where he meets with us. That is where he speaks uh, to us. And uh, we also need to have clarity whether some of the things that we are doing, whether it's born out of the flesh or our own uh, desires, our own will, our own plans that we have for ourselves, or whether it's born of the Spirit. So John chapter 3 verse 6 says, for that which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is a Spirit. We can't convert that which is born 
of the flesh into the spirit um, okay because uh, you know things that are of the flesh uh, does not you know receive the power does not receive the authority uh, does not uh, uh, you know cannot stand the test of uh, time we know that uh, you know every work that we do uh, will stand the test of time and if uh, if it's made up of uh, you know straw or uh, mud or bricks it will just easily be burnt by fire it won't stand uh, the test of time but we know that when we build according to the spirit what god wills what what plans for our lives then you know it will stand the test of time it will have lasting impact it will have eternal values inter eternal impacts and will uh, you know enhance the kingdom of god and also extend the kingdom of god here on um, earth okay so we need to be very careful of uh, you know what we are birthing whether it's birthing out of the flesh or what uh, out of our uh, spirit man okay very often when we give birth to the things of the flesh it's done in our own strength in our own wisdom our own energy um, and it we cannot uh, you know we're looking for um, fruit we are looking for uh, you know god to uh, work for science miracles and wonders it does not happen because you know the uh, what we birth of the flesh cannot be converted into the things of the uh, spirit okay in exodus chapter 2 30 verses 22 to 33 god is telling moses uh, to prepare an, an anointing oil uh, for the tabernacle uh, for the utensils in the tabernacle and he gives him the proportion of uh, how much you know uh, of what to use like myrrh and uh, 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 you know sweet smelling cane and cinnamon and uh, cassia and so he's saying you know take so much of all of these things mix them up and uh, he says you know this is the anointing oil which you need to you know anoint uh, uh, on the ark of the testimony on the tabernacle the tables the utensils the lampstand the altar of incense uh, all of the burnt offerings uh, the labor the basin everything that is there uh, you know you need to um, anoint it with this anointing oil and whatever is anointed with this anointing oil uh, you know it becomes very very um, holy and it says you know uh, this shall not be poured out on man's flesh okay nor shall you make any of uh, this uh, uh, as a perfume or as a as a cream or a body lotion um, you know, um, uh, for people to use, and you cannot use this on uh, uh, any flesh or any outsiders, uh, because you know, if they, if you do that, then they shall be cut off from, uh, from, uh, from being my people, from being my children. So these very strict, uh, you know, guidance uh, that God is giving uh, Moses. So from this. Uh, this anointing oil, which we read here in Exodus chapter 30, which, uh, you know, God is telling Moses to make and what he needs to do with this anointing oil. It's actually this anointing oil is a type of uh, uh, and the type and shadow of the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Okay, So it's similar to the, uh, you know, uh, type it's the type and shadow of the anointing of the work of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. So some things that we can learn um, you know, uh, from this anointing oil that God asked Moses to make in the Old Testament and how this is a type and shadow of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the first thing what we can learn is whatever is used in the service of God must be anointed by God. Okay, so here we see that, you know, he says anoint everything in the tabernacle, the labors, the basins, the utensils, everything. Uh, and when you anoint all of this with this anointing oil, it says, then it becomes most holy. Okay, and whoever touches them, uh, you know, uh, must be holy themselves, must clean themselves up because all of these utensils are, are, all, are very, very uh, holy because they have been anointed. So, you know, whatever is used in the service of God must be anointed by God. And whatever is anointed by God becomes consecrated to God. That means becomes set apart for God, just for God to serve God. God will not, will, uh, not anoint what is born of the flesh, uh, God will not tolerate any imitation of the anointing. Uh, he says, you know, don't make uh, any uh, such, uh, you know, use the same mixture of uh, all of these oils and the amount I've told you to make any perfumes or body lotions to be used on any of uh, 
the people uh, because if they do that they'll be cut off from uh, the, uh, uh, of being a people of God and so we see that God will not tolerate any imitations of the anointing and uh, we see that what is born of the flesh does not have the life and the presence of uh, God okay so um, so we see here that and we learn that you know whatever is born of the flesh whatever we do uh, in our flesh with our own understanding in our own will you know does not have uh, it might be like a imitation of uh, God what God is asking us to do we can fool people we can fool ourselves but you know it won't have the anointing it won't have the life the presence and the anointing of God okay we will not see the life of God we won't see his presence move we will not see his anointing in the sense that we will not see his power and uh, you know his power being released and people being transformed and healed and restored and um, uh, delivered okay uh, what is born the flesh uh, hinders what you know God desires uh, to be birthed out of the uh, spirit. Because Galatians chapter four verse twenty nine says, "But as he who was born according to the flesh, uh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so is now." So he's basically talking that those who were born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit. Okay, so it says that the things that we birth in the flesh uh, will be the very things that kind of hinder or, uh, or uh, you know, or destroy, uh, you know, the things that we birth in the uh, spirit. That is why it's important for us to feed our spirit man and to starve our carnal nature because, you know, uh, we can't, uh, you know, oscillate between the carnal nature and the spirit man. You know, it's just one that will rule or reign. One will be greater than the other. So the more you're feeding your carnal nature, that reigns. The more you're feeding your spirit man, that that trains so you know uh, when you know when we are so inclined to the things of the flesh the desires of the flesh uh, our will you know uh, for us to be glorified for us to do what we desire uh, then you know even if God puts his desire into our hearts uh, we will it will uh, it, it can be trotted or it can be destroyed or it can be uh, choked uh, because of uh, the desires of the flesh that is speaking out louder, that's craving out uh, louder, that is forcing us to do uh, what our flesh requires us to do than what the spirit is asking us to uh, uh, do. So, you know, uh, most of the time our struggle is not against uh, the enemy, Satan, but it's the most of the time, uh, you know, the struggle is in our own bodies. You know, in our own flesh, our flesh is crying out for something. The spirit man is saying something else. And hence, it's very important, uh, you know, who we are listening to, who we are obeying and what we are uh, doing. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, Paul says, For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that they do not do the things that you wish. Now, we know that the flesh and uh, the spirit are in contrast with each other they op oppose each other um, and we need to be careful that you know not only when we're talking about christian ministry but any area of our life that we are constantly listening to uh, not our flesh not uh, submitting to the desires of the flesh but desire uh, submitting to the things of the spirit desiring to do the things of the spirit so even when we struggle we can say god i'm struggling it's my flesh that flesh is crying out it's craving for attention it's craving for me to do these things uh, god just give me the grace and the strength to follow on and do what you are asking me uh, or what your purpose for me to do or what is your will or your plan for my um, life and we also know that what is birthed out of the flesh will not benefit anyone because we know it has no it has, does not have the life of god does not have his presence or his uh, anointing in john chapter 6 verse 63 uh, it says that you know in this it's a spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing the words that i speak to you are spirit and they are life this is jesus saying you know he says my words i speak to you are spirit and they are um 
life. So we know that you know the what is born of the flesh or birthed in the flesh will not benefit people. It does not have any power to produce, heal, restore. Um, you know, uh, it can just give, it can be very sensational to people. People can feel motivated at that time. They can feel energized. Uh, they can uh, feel excited. Uh, you know, they can feel happy. Uh, or whatever you know their senses are all motivated uh, but we know that emotions don't last for long okay they can just step out and they're back into the world they're stepping back into the world where uh, they face again the same challenges but it's only uh, you know Jesus and the Holy Spirit who can bring a transformation of life and it's the power of the Holy Spirit so uh, uh, life and power will bring about uh, of the Holy Spirit brings about transformation and that comes only to the presence and the power of the uh, Holy Spirit that has a lasting impact in the lives of um, people so don't do things uh, based on you know feeling good uh, or I'm feeling happy so I'm doing this uh, because the church feels happy my Bible study group feels happy uh, you know people feel happy when they sing the song not the other songs but don't do things to please people to make people feel good and happy but you know just sense what the holy spirit is leading you and guiding you to do um, so that people will be transformed into christ likeness and not just be excited and happy um, because emotions we know don't last uh, long Okay, uh, Psalms chapter 127, verse 1 says, you know, unless the Lord builds the house, laborers labor in uh, vain. Okay, unless it's, uh, you know, unless uh, the Lord guards the city, the watchmen stand guard in uh, vain. So um, if the Lord does not build it, then whatever I am building is going to be in vain. Okay, so... Um, uh, whatever we might be building can be very grand, can be great. Uh, you know, men can, uh, you know, praise us, can give us the glory, but it will not stand uh, the test of uh, time because Paul says uh, in First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, that, uh, you know, um, our works, whether, you know, if it's of wood, hay or straw, these will not stand the test of fire it will be easily burned we know that wood uh, hay and straw easily burn so if you're building our foundation uh, 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 you know it'd be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand when the storm came you know just it just uh, you know did stand but you know we need to build our house on the rock that means we need to build our our, uh, our foundation or we need to build our lives or what god has called us to do on christ uh, the foundation stone, uh, building on his will, his plan, his purpose, and what he wants us to um, uh, do, okay? And in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, you know, um, you know, Paul tells us, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh or you will not fulfill the lust of the um, flesh. Now, what is does it mean to walk in the spirit? Basically, to walk in the spirit means to live a life that is sensitive and yielded to the Holy Spirit. We're living a life yielded to the Spirit of God, uh, and we are ensuring that whatever we are doing is what the Holy Spirit wants us to do, and it's not birthed about or birth from our uh, flesh. So, you know, walking in the spirit is not something that we do. Uh, you know, in, in different moments of our life, uh, but it's, you know, making a conscious effort to walk daily, moment by moment, every choice that we make, every move that we make, we're making under the guidance and leadership, the influence of the uh, Holy um, uh, Spirit. And, you know, when we begin to walk in the spirit. That means we are constantly, daily, moment by moment, making a choice to walk in the spirit. Uh, and when our, and at times when our flesh is crying out louder, you know, and we are, uh, you know, trying to give in to our flesh, that's when, you know, we can draw strength from the, uh, 
the Holy Spirit because, you know, we are constantly tuned to listen to the Holy uh, Spirit because day in and day out, we're making a choice to listen to the Holy Spirit. So, you know, at times when we have to make important decisions and the flesh is crying out loud and demanding our attention, you know, at those times we can, uh, we would be in a better position to crucify the desires of our flesh uh, because we are drawing strength from the Holy Spirit. And how are we drawing strength from the Holy Spirit? It just does not happen in the spur of the moment. It's because we are consciously, you know, this uh, uh, we have constantly tuned ourselves to do that. We constantly are in, um, in the right motion of doing that day in and day out. And so everything just, uh, you know, falls into uh, place. So it's important that we walk in yieldedness and brokenness to the Holy Spirit. Yieldedness means in total submission to the Holy Spirit. Uh, brokenness means we are completely dependent on the um, uh, Holy Spirit. Okay. So we know that, you know, yielding uh, to the Holy Spirit, submission uh, or obedience to the Holy Spirit is a choice. Uh, that we need to make, you know, uh, every time we, uh, you know, have an, you know, we have a choice in front of us. Uh, it's a choice that we have to make to listen to what the Holy Spirit is asking us to do. Or, you know, at times we know what God has already called us to do in his uh, word. So we choose to listen and submit to the Holy Spirit. And we, you know, we don't in any way quench uh, or grieve the Holy Spirit uh, that is in us, but we desire you know, to walk in the spirit, we desire to live in the spirit, we desire to be yielded and submitted to the Holy Spirit. And just like yieldedness is a choice, brokenness is also a choice. You know, brokenness means you're completely uh, dependent on the Holy Spirit. You know, even though uh, we can be very confident people, some of us are very confident, we're very smart, we're very uh, intelligent, we have the gifts and the talents. Uh, but we recognize, we come to that place where we recognize and say, God, you know, uh, all of this without you is like basically meaningless. You know, like Paul says, you know, he had all the wisdom uh, of the Old Testament. He was a scholar, studied under great scholars like the manual. But he says he considers all that as foolishness, as rubbish, comparing uh, to the greatness of knowing Christ Jesus as his uh, Lord. So just the basic fact of knowing that even though, you know, um, whether they're intelligent, multi-talented, multitasked, uh, people who can do things like this. But we need to remember that we are just human. We are earthen vessels. Um, if not for the anointing of God that is on our lives, uh, the outpouring of his anointing, his power uh, in and through us, you know, our giftings, our talents, our intellect uh, can all be futile. Just like, for example, King Solomon. Now, as long as he stayed in the will of God, as long as he obeyed God, as long as he yielded and submitted to God, you know, um, his uh, wisdom, uh, his knowledge, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, helped him. You know, uh, he 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 enjoyed what God had given him. It's blessing. But the minute he, um, you know, pride came over, and you know, he began, uh, you know, he had so many uh, wives, thousand thousand and more wives i think i don't know how many wives he had <laughs> uh but you know the number of wives he had who led him away from um from god and he started worshiping uh idols we see that you know he writes everything is so meaningless you know everything is futile uh why did he find it meaningless and futile because there was no god in the picture you know so everything become futile and meaningless uh, including the blessings that we receive from God when God is not in the picture, when we leave him out of the um, equation, okay? So um, it's important that uh, we know that in spite of all that, you know, we have, all the blessings that we have, remember who we are, we're just earthen vessels. If it's not for God's anointing and power, you know, we are just like broken earthen vessels of no use, absolutely no use, okay? And just... So totally leaning on God's power to work uh, in and through our lives. Now, what are the two test questions? Um, uh, you know, uh, what motivates me and uh, who is glorified? So these two questions we need to constantly keep asking ourselves, uh, even as we are uh, building God's kingdom, kingdom builders, you know, what motivates me and who is uh, glorified? So, you know, 
and when we ask these questions, you know, why am I doing this program? Why am I going and teaching here? Uh, or uh, why am I doing what I'm doing? Uh, you know, what is motivating me? We need to ask that question. Uh, and then who is being glorified? And if we are able in our conscience to give a clear answer, a right answer, our conscience is not pricking us, the Holy Spirit is, you know, you know, telling us, you know, your conscience is not right, what you're doing, your motives are not right, then we know that, you know, what we are birthing is out of uh, the flesh and not the spirit, and we can realign ourselves and come back to God. And God is more than willing to, you know, lead us and guide us and help us um, uh, to be on the right uh, track. Okay, so uh, we need to ask these questions, uh, you know, at different moments in our life, um, answer it uh, truthfully, and uh, you know, uh, and check, keep a check on our uh, selves. Okay, the Holy Spirit, uh, even as He guides us into all truth, He leads us into the future. He He reveals the will, uh, the plan of God. He also reveals when, where, and um, how. Okay, so He directs us and leads us when to do what, where. Uh, to go and how to go about doing things. He instructs us, he gives us even the details, okay? So like, for example, in Acts chapter 8, uh, sorry, the Holy Spirit tells um, uh, tells uh, Philip, you know, uh, go near and overtake um, uh, this chariot. And we see that the Holy Spirit leading um, Philip to the uh, utopian eunuch. And, uh, uh, and when he goes, uh, you know, uh, Near the uh, the chariot at the right moment, we know that he's reading from the book of Isaiah, and uh, uh, Philip leads, um, uh, you know, interprets scripture for him, helps him to understand what he's reading, and we know that this eunuch is, uh, uh, you know, baptized in the water. He accepts Christ, baptized in the water, and then, uh, you know, he goes back and you know he takes the gospel to uh, Ethiopia. We also see in Acts chapter ten. Um, you know, um, uh, we see that um, you know when Philip he has this trance on this on the on the terrace, he's waiting for food to be prepared. He's very hungry, and uh, you know the, the the trance that he has with this white sheet with all the uh, unclean animals, and God says, you know, uh, get up and rise up and kill. And uh, Peter says, how can I, you know, eat them? They're unclean. And so God says, don't call what uh, I have created. Uh, clean as unclean and then he says you know there are two uh, there are people waiting uh, for you there are men waiting for you uh, uh, downstairs uh, three of them waiting for you uh, go down and uh, you know don't ask any questions just go with them and so Peter goes with them and uh, you know God leads him to the house of Cornelius who's a Gentile and we know that Peter uh, shares the gospel with them and as he's preaching the gospel people are cut in their heart that means they 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 realize that they are so sinful and immediately you know they may have confessed their sins whatever but you know we see that even before peter finishes sermon and led them to an altar call you know they start speaking in tongues and then peter realizes the whole trance he had and what god showed him and uh, because he, he was just basically giving him a direction of cue uh, Telling him that you know it's uh, the the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not only for the Jews but also for the uh, uh, Gentiles. So here we see that you know the important works of God, uh, how Philip you know shares the gospel and how the gospel is taken to Africa, uh, and also how the gospel is being proclaimed to the for the first time to the Gentiles. Uh, you know, all of these monumental things in the growth and expansion of God's kingdom, how he's fulfilling his plans and purposes. We see that, you know, God, Holy Spirit gives instructions, but it's just very short uh, instructions, simple instructions. And when it's obeyed, you can see how, you know, the, the, uh, the immense uh, power it has to extend God's kingdom and the power it has to impact uh, uh, eternity. We also read in Acts chapter 13 when the disciples and you know were fasting and praying, uh, you know the Holy Spirit said to them, uh, "Set apart for me uh, Saul and Barnabas for the work of uh, God." Okay, so uh, then having fasted and prayed, you know the the disciples laid their hands on on um, Saul and um, Barnabas and you know released them for the work of um, God. 
Okay, so, so we see here that, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, also called out Barnabas and Saul for ministry and they were sent out by the Holy Spirit. So we see that, you know, the Holy Spirit uh, even calls people out of the congregation to do specific works. When he does that, we need to be discerning. We need to release people into the work that God has called them uh, outside of our own local church and ministry, just bless them, release them, uh, so that people can obey uh, what the Holy Spirit is leading them and desiring them uh, to do. Okay, we also see that the Holy Spirit also, you know, stops us from going from some places. So we read in Acts chapter sixteen, verses uh, six and. Uh, from verses 6 to 10, you know, Paul and his team, they are in Galatia, they're preaching the word, they want to go to uh, Asia, but the Holy Spirit forbids them from going to Asia. And then they go down to Mysia, and when they're in Mysia, you know, they want to go to Bithynia, and the Holy Spirit again stops them from going to Bithynia. So they pass by Mysia, and they come to Taurus. And when they come to Taurus, we see that, you know, Paul has a vision where a man from Macedonia stands and pleads him to come to Macedonia and help them and uh, we see that after this he sees his vision you know Paul tells his team and uh, you know the Holy Spirit may have revealed it to the team as well we see that you know all of them you know it doesn't mention here um, but it says here that uh, you know after that after now after he had seen the vision immediately he sought to go to Macedonia concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. So the us is not just Paul, but all of Paul and his teammates were there and everywhere, and everyone were in sync because they would have also received a word from the Holy Spirit or affirmation. We exactly don't know. Uh, but, you know, uh, we know that the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us where to go, whom to speak to, what to do. But also sometimes he stops us from going to places and uh, meeting people, uh, you know, and he just shows us where and leads us where we need to uh, go. Okay, so um, we see that when they go to Macedonia, you know, um, uh, they, they do a mighty work over there. So we see that, you know, the Holy Spirit, um, you know, uh, uh, even as he inspires us and leads us, uh, you know, we need to follow into the leading of what he's leading us, guiding us to do for the plan and purposes that uh, he has for our um, lives. Okay, so the important thing to understand here is we cannot, you know, build God's kingdom or cannot do the work of you know, God's kingdom uh, with just human understanding. Uh, the kingdom work requires uh, the spirit's guidance. Um, it requires the spirit's uh, kingdom thinking. Uh, it requires the mind of God, which requires a renewed mind, a mind that is renewed with the word of God, and also thinking in terms of God's ways and in lines with God's thought. And how can we think in line with God's thoughts, his ways? How can we have kingdom thinking? It's only when we have a renewed mind. A renewed mind comes when we have... Uh, you know, when we are meditating on the word of God and when we are filling our lives uh, with the uh, word of God. OK, uh, and we also know that um, not just the renewed mind that we need to have, but we also see that, you know, uh, our spirit man, um, you know, has to be in sync, in tune with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit witness is uh, uh, bears witness in our uh, spirit. And, you know, there's several ways the Holy Spirit bears in our witness uh, 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 in our spirit. We learn this in, uh, you know, uh, in, your, in your first year course, uh, Minister's Foundation, where you looked at, um, uh, you know, the different ways um, the Holy Spirit bears inner witness in your spirit man. It's through the quickening word of scripture, uh, you know, impressions or, uh, you know, the flash of information that comes in your spirit man. So knowing within, uh, you know, it's just through uh, the peace of God, it's impression of feelings. He also communicates to uh, pictures, ideas. Uh, to prophecy, dreams and visions, uh, physical manifestations and other ways. So we know that the Holy Spirit uh, bears witness or leads us and guides us in different ways. The prompting comes in different ways. Uh, but we need to, we can receive all of this and we can know it's the Holy Spirit speaking to us when we are living lives that are sensitive 
uh, to uh, the Holy Spirit, when we are communing with the Holy Spirit, when we are in communion and fellowship with the uh, Holy Spirit. Okay. So it's essential for us to, uh, you know, establish uh, uh, a com an unbreakable communion with the Holy Spirit. You know, we need to continually communion, have communion with the Holy Spirit, be in communion with Him, relate with Him, fellowship with Him, um, and we are always uh, tuning our hearts, our minds, as the Spirit man, uh, to listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do and what He's directing us. Uh, to do. And how do we do that? Uh, you know, uh, how can we be sensitive to the Holy Spirit? You know, you know, set aside uh, regular times when you are praying, uh, reading God's word, fill your mind with God's word, uh, you know, keep praying in the spirit. Uh, the more you pray in the spirit, the more you are, uh, you know, communing with the Holy Spirit, the more you are uh, able to discern what the Spirit is telling you, receive from the Holy Spirit. Um, also, it's important for us to stay in a position where we are calm, uh, peaceful in our mind, in our uh, in our heart, um, because we need to ensure that you know the Holy Spirit uh, is like a dove. You know, uh, it's like a dove that came upon Jesus. So just imagine, you know, if a dove is sitting on your shoulder, then how would you move? You know, you won't be rash or you won't be moving fast or you won't be agitated or irritated or screaming or shouting, uh, you know, or banging uh, things or, you know, being uh, throwing, a, you know, a, a things in rage and fits of anger. You would basically be very calm and composed and be very, very careful in every moment because you don't want to disturb, you know, the dove that is sitting uh, on your shoulder. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is like a dove, you know, that's resting on those who walk in peace. So sometimes we can say, no, uh, why am I not able to hear the Holy Spirit? It's because some of us are so overwhelmed. We are so anxious all the time. We are so worried. We are just running from pillar to post, from one thing into the other. Our mind is so blocked with, you know, so many things that we need to do. We are not just calm and composed and quiet in our spirit, man. Uh, and, you know, when we are not, uh, we can't hear the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very gentle, very calm, very peaceful. We need to be come to that mode where we're peaceful, gentle, quiet, to listen uh, to the Holy Spirit, okay? And the other thing that we also need to do is we need to maintain a heart that is pure, uh, 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 live a life that's pure and holy in God's sight. Our motive should be uh, holy and pure uh, because, um, you know, the purity of our heart actually influences our revelation of God. Because uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 says, the pure in heart are those who will see God. Okay, so uh, you're saying that, hey, I don't re receive these revelations from God that other men and women are able to receive. It's maybe we need to check whether we are poor, pure in our hearts, in the, the way that we're living our lives, in our thoughts, uh, in the motives, why we are doing what we are uh, uh, doing, okay? Um, so when, you know, when we are not pure in our hearts, then our uh, even our very idea of who God is, uh, uh, his nature, his characteristics, what he's doing uh, in our lives can be very tainted, you know, it can be a tainted picture, it can be a skewed uh, image, it can be something that is leading us away from the truth, diverting us away from the truth. It can tell us, you know, God is partial, he does not love me, he does not care for me, he's forgotten about me, and all that is the lie. Why? Because our hearts, our motives are not pure, uh, and it's not aligned to God's will. Um, and what we are doing is not the right motives with what we are uh, uh, doing, okay? Uh, so the Holy Spirit is holy, and hence, you know, uh, you know, He delights uh, in us being holy. But the moment we sin, it grieves and breaks the heart of the Holy Spirit. It uh, grieves Him, okay? So uh, we need to set apart ourselves uh, uh, you know, uh, to be holy, to be godly, that's when we can listen to the Holy Spirit. And um, the key to maintaining the right fellowship 
with the Holy Spirit is uh, unity, you know, maintaining the unity among believers, unity in our relations that we have. Uh, and uh, we can maintain unity only when we walk in love, when we love people with the way Christ uh, loved us. And 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 says, God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God. And uh, we cannot walk in him or walk in the spirit if we are not walking in love okay so you know when paul writes about all the gifts of the spirit he says but you know uh, pursue love he says above all this you know pursue love that's more important because when you are able to live in unity and in love with people then you know the, the fruit of the spirit is manifest in your life you can just see even the gifts of the spirit automatically being manifested in your life so don't run for the behind the gifts you know uh, uh, yes you desire the gifts but you know more than that desire the love for god desire uh, you know to uh, a passionate love for god and you know out of that love flow in love for uh, people that you are relating to and then when you do that you know uh, you will see that the gifts of the spirit will be automatically released in our uh, lives okay so it's essential to discern also uh, the spirit's timing you know when the spirit is doing what uh, we need to discern that uh, like uh, you know uh, the the uh, the holy spirit told philip you know um, go near and overtake the uh, chariot and when he obeyed uh, we know the outcome of it so you know even as um, you know the holy spirit speaks sometimes he'll ask us to act on it immediately uh, sometimes you know he will tell us that we need to uh, you know, wait on him, take time to pray and fast and then act on his instruction. Like we uh, looked at in Acts chapter 13, where, you know, they fasted and prayed and then the Holy Spirit told them, you know, uh, lay hands on, set apart uh, uh, Saul and uh, Barnabas for the work of God. And that's what they did. And they did that after fasting and praying. So when the Holy Spirit leads us, sometimes it will be immediate action. Sometimes we just receive it in our spirit, man, but the Holy Spirit wants us to prepare by just praying over it, um, you know, waiting for more lead, leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit and, uh, you know, and then act at the right time, at the Kairos uh, moment, okay? Uh, it's also important that we pray in the Spirit because praying in the Spirit helps us to understand the purposes of um god okay first corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 10 and 16 can somebody read that please first corinthians chapter 2 verses uh, 9 10 and 16 can anyone read that first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 however as it is written no i have seen no earth has been, no man has come to what God has given for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit stretches all things, even the good things of God. Thank you. Was, uh, was 10 and 16? Uh, 16 also, you read 10. Was 16, please, Jeffina? For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Thank you, Jeffina. So here it says that, you know, it's the Holy Spirit that reveals to us the things of God that God has prepared beforehand, you know, even before the foundations of the world, the things that God has prepared for us, you know, it's the Holy Spirit who reveals it to us. So the will of God, the purposes of God for our life is not a mystery. The Holy Spirit reveals it to us. Uh, he reveals things that no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Uh, you know, not even those things that have entered into the uh, into the heart, the mind of people. But it's the Holy Spirit who reveals these mysteries to us, and then it says that we have the mind of Christ. So when can we say that we have the mind of Christ? You know, we have the mind of Christ when we know the thoughts, the plans, the purposes that God has uh, in His mind for us, uh, because it has been revealed to us by the Spirit of God. So we, you know, we can come to that place where we can say, you know, I have the mind of Christ because, you know, uh, I have the Holy Spirit revealing His plans, His will, His purposes, uh, which God 
foreordained, uh, uh, you know, which God uh, foreknew, which God prepared for me even before the foundation of the word. So Holy Spirit is revealing to me, uh, you know, uh, I know it. And hence, you know, I have the mind of Christ. And, you know, a mind of Christ is also a mind that is renewed. A renewed mind uh, is also a mind of Christ because a mind that is renewed, you know, is... Uh, renewed by the word of God, is in alignment with the will, plan, and the uh, will of God, uh, is aligned and yielded and submitted uh, to God, and hence the Holy Spirit can reveal uh, the mind of God, the heart of God uh, to us. But if it is not, if it's very carnal, you know, we cannot discern or uh, understand the will and the plan and the purposes of God. Uh, and that's why, that's when we're living, you know, aimlessly running around from here to there, uh, because we don't have a renewed mind, um, because we are not, uh, you know, pursuing the things of God. We don't have a heart for God. We don't have a love for God, for the things of God. And hence, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit cannot reveal, even though he desires to reveal it to us, he cannot. And hence, we need to prepare ourselves to have a renewed mind so that, you know, the Holy Spirit can reveal the plan and purpose of God to us. And, uh, you know, we can hence say we have the mind of Christ. Okay, we'll stop here. We'll continue on the next class. Anyone has any questions? Any questions? Okay, we had our, uh, uh, you know, the first assessment for uh, uh, on uh, the kingdom of God. We had it on the first uh, six lessons, right? Uh, we'll have uh, uh, the second assessment uh, on chapter 7 to the to the last chapter. I think there are 11 uh, chapters. So we'll have 7 to 11. Uh, when can we have the second assessment? Can we have it next Thursday and Friday? Uh, I can release it on Thursday. And uh, can you submit it on Friday evening? Is that okay, everyone? So next Thursday is uh, 13th when I release the paper and you can submit it on Friday 14th. Is that fine with all of you? Okay, two people. Thank you, Jeffina and Anita. What about the others? Okay, thank you, John. I think let's get two days to do the assignment. Sorry? Let's get two days to do the assignment. Sorry, I didn't get what you said, Isaac. I'm, I'm suggesting that we get two days for to do the assignment. Uh, this is not the assignment. This is an assessment that I'm giving uh, on next Thursday. Is that okay? Yes, no? Pastor brother is asking two days to complete it. Oh. <laughs> okay, you want two days to do it. Uh, okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Sorry, Isaac. Uh, couldn't understand. Uh, yeah, okay, so then uh, maybe Friday and Saturday, is that okay? Is Friday and Saturday okay? I think it's okay. okay. Okay, thank you, Isaac. Okay, then we'll have two days to do it. So I'll release it uh, next Thursday, which is uh, uh, the 13th of October, and then you all can submit it on the 15th. Okay, okay thank you, everyone, for joining class. Have a blessed day. Uh, God bless all of you. Thank you.